What up, what up, what up, what up? What is good? What up, what up, what up? <laughs> What's good, everybody? What's good? What's up? Yes. Hey yo, Sean. Hey, we're gonna get in real soon. Hey yo, Sean. We're gonna um we're gonna get in real, real, real soon. Real soon. Um, not Maybe not this weekend, but maybe like the weekend or something like that after Fourth of July. So just you know, we'll set up a time where you can come on up here and we'll uh, we'll link up. Definitely got to do that. What's good, Bolo congregation? What is good? What is good? What is good? What is good? <laughs> oh, what's good from Bama, Alabama? You know, I'm a Tuscaloosa. I stayed in Tuscaloosa for a few years. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get a few more people in here. I'm going to get a few more people in here. Money, money, money. <laughs> That's right, Ducky. Money, money, money. Yeah. I've been meaning to get back to you on that uh, A.O. Shine about uh, you coming up here. Ducky needs to come up here too, man. He need, he need to make that trip down here. Fat Boy, what's good? D. Davis, what's good? What's good? Yeah, we're going to talk about a few things today. Talk about a few things today. What's good? Who we got? Jay Simon, what's up? What's up? DC, what's good? Mr. Shaw, I don't know how to say your name, but what's, what's good? What is good? One day Shaw, what's good? What's good? Level Up Productions, what's good? Reezy Glee, Reezy Glee, that's how you say it? What's good from Denver? Okay. Yeah. Meach made the beat. What's up? What's up? Yeah. So we got a few people in here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold y'all too long because I know some of y'all might be working. I know some of y'all might be home cooking up. I know some of y'all might be sleeping. I know some of y'all might be trying to find ways to get money. So that's why you're watching me right now. <laughs> but yeah, I wanna um just have a brief, you know, combo with you guys, man. If you guys got any questions, um, go ahead and leave the questions in the comments. I'll try to see them. But the best way for me to see your question is leave a little donation. This is Bishop Bolo. We are all under the church of the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We are the Bolo congregation, the Bolo nation, Bolo congregation. And I am Bishop Bolo. And that collection plate is going around the whole time the collection plate doesn't stop so if you do want to donate you can go ahead and donate a dollar two dollars three dollars four dollars that way your question will be seen um it will be seen faster but i will try to answer all questions on here i'll try to get as much as i can what's good from south africa what's good lexicon kentucky what's good from augusta wavy pluto what's good all right from noonan okay you right down the road from me <laughs> What's good, Big Beats? What's up, man? Big Beats Franklin, what's good? So, yeah, I want to talk about a few things, and I want to address some stuff that a lot of you guys ask me because uh, right now, since my Instagram is kind of taking off, since I'm doing all the little funny reels and stuff like that on Instagram, I get a lot of people coming there, and, you know, a lot of stuff in the comment sections, like when, we're, when, we're, when I'm doing videos and stuff like that, um... But people want to know how can you, you know, how can you guys get paid without having like a big placement? Now, let me break this down first. Um, some of you guys do not know what a placement is. So I'm going to break this down. If you guys are coming in later on, you can watch the replay of this. I'll cut this up towards the end of the video. So I do like some key points and I'll cut it up and not towards the end of the video, but I do it towards the end of the week. So I'll probably replay this on Friday. So it's Monday right now. I will have this chopped up and i will put this on my site and i'll replay it on friday just in case you guys missed any any uh point pointers um so a placement first thing we're going to talk about is a placement what is a placement a placement is when you get a if you write a song or if you make a beat and it gets placed on somebody's album it makes it to the album now you have big placements such as like label placements or whatever and then you have smaller placements, which might be a placement with just like you and your homeboy or your homegirl, whoever. 
it's all considered a placement. If something gets released and is making money off of it, it is basically considered a placement. It's just that some placements have a little bit more weight than others. So if you get a placement like on a Lil Durk album or a Drake album, that's a pretty big placement. But if you did have a placement on maybe like a underground artist's album who might have maybe, you know, 50,000, you know, followers and fans and they might sell a couple thousand off the album and you get some money off that, that is still considered a placement. So at the end of the day, a placement is a placement. What I'm trying to talk about is major placements. I'm talking about placements with majors, such as people who are assigned to the universal system, people who are assigned to like, you know, major companies, okay? Stuff like that. Um, universal system, the Sony system, the Warner system, stuff like that. All that stuff is major placements. And even considering how things are going right now, shoot, like, you know, most of the time, like, you know, Google, Right now, it's probably, if you really think about it, the biggest record company of, of them all because YouTube is the most searched place on the planet right now to, to, to do anything. So Google and YouTube is like the two biggest things to find new artists and to and to do things. So that's really where a lot of people are being um, discovered, okay? So we're gonna talk about sync licensing as well, uh, Jay Cleveland, uh, Green, we wanna talk about that as well. So, um, so right now, a lot of you guys wanna know how to make money. Okay, music is your passion. You bought all this equipment just like how I have, and you want to make this a passion of yours because you want to start making money off of what you do. First things first. First things first. You have to get the notion out of your mind to always trying to, for you trying to always work with a big artist. Like, for real. Like there's so many of you guys right now who want to work with big artists that you save beats, you keep beats on your laptop, you don't really want to release stuff because you're thinking to yourself, oh, this beat would be perfect for NBA Youngboy, or this beat would be perfect for Dirt, or this beat would be perfect for Lil Baby. You know what I'm saying? The chances are you get on them albums are very slim, okay? I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's very slim. <laughs> Just thinking about all the other producers that this particular artist works with, you got to think. Like, look at all the producers that Baby works with. You know what I'm saying? So, you might as well think to yourself, well, he, probably gonna, he's probably going to try to get a beat from maybe Turbo. He's probably going to get a beat from Twisted Genius. He's probably going to get a beat from, you know, whoever. You know what I'm saying? It might be it's so many other, other big producers out here that it's very hard for you to compete on getting on those albums. One of the best ways I feel about getting on a major album or a major placement is by working your way up and just basically working with brand new artists. I preach this all the time. I always say working with brand new artists is the best way to get up to that major level. And a lot of you guys think, well, working with a brand new artist, you think that, okay, it has to be somebody who has to have a whole bunch of followers or, or have this or have that. No, it is. It does not have to be like that. It could be with somebody who has two or three thousand followers. It could be somebody as small as that, but as long as they are moving in the right direction. This stuff takes time. Even when you get with a major artist and you get that major placement, it still even takes time for your money to even come in. And then pretty much that's it. You just have a song on an album with a major artist, but you're not necessarily building with that artist unless you get really in there good. But if that artist already has four or five producers that they usually deal with, sometimes it's pretty hard to get in there and to stay inside of that camp like that. Now, if you're with somebody who you're just starting off with, then you can build up a chemistry and hopefully if that artist blows or pops or whatever, then you would necessarily probably come along as well. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, like I think about uh, ESTG and Forever Rolling. Look how that turned out. Like I remember I met Fro Forever Rolling at Sunny Digital Spot. You know what I'm saying? Cool kid, very, very to himself. You know what I'm saying? And just a dope ass producer. You know what I'm saying? And I seen how even Sunny was kind of gravitating towards him and, and just, just basically kind of like really kind of like uh, being like a, a, a mentor or like a big brother to him or whatever. And I could tell that the, that the kid was dope because I know how dope Sonny is. And he's just uh, just a dope individual. When you hear everything that he does with ESTG is just like, it's dope. And then they, it, when you think of ESTG, you think of Forever Rolling. You know what I'm saying? So, and then 
ESTG just basically blew up within like the past two years or so like nationwide but before that he was really big like in the midwest and even like you know uh down here in the south in, in the southern region so a lot of times it's best to go ahead and work with smaller artists because you have room to actually really work with these artists like they're some of these guys are hungry and they're actually willing to take in the information that you give them if you have somebody that's already on that higher status they pretty much just want the beat they don't really want your input because they done it their way they've got to a certain point and they really don't need your input they just want you to make beats now if you're with the artist and you kind of go in you kind of work with that artist and you build together then that could be situations where they can maybe even sign to your uh, uh, production company or you might can go in on a partnership type of a situation or that person will make sure that you are the first one in line to get all of the major stuff because you came up together now a lot some of these situations are not perfect yeah, some of them are definitely not perfect, but some of them are very profitable in the long run. That's a very long way of looking at it. It's almost like riding the stock market. You know it's going to be 10% if you do it over time, but if you, you know, if you're trying to look for quick gains or whatever, you can either lose a lot or gain a lot. You know what I'm saying? So I look at the long-term way. I look at that way as actually being one of the best ways to really make money in this game if you're not really attached to a bigger producer okay another thing that you can do to make some money as a producer okay and hear me out on this because i really want you guys um you know okay here it goes uh, okay he said what's the best way to find a smaller artist in your genre collaborate with anything better reaching out to a few people on soundcloud okay one thing you want to do is you want to go on to instagram TikTok, places like that. SoundCloud is cool, but I want to see what this artist is doing so far as like Instagram, TikTok. I want to see what they're doing so far as them trying to push themselves. Is this an artist saying that I'm a dope artist and you go to their page and all you see is them smoking a blunt or them just chilling all the time or, you know, stuff like that. Or you might see them every once in a while in the studio. That's not the type of artist you want to deal with. You want to deal with somebody that if you go to their page, even if they might have 900 followers, they got music videos. They actually took their money and paid for music videos. They're paying for promotions. They got nice flyers. They got, you know, they got nice album covers. Those are the ones you can tell that they're actually putting their money into their craft. Okay. And those are the ones that typically might need a little pickup from somebody else to try to get them to that point. So that's what I would say. Go to like YouTube or TikTok and try to find those type of artists and make sure that they're dope. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that they are dope. Make sure they're dope for what you're trying to do too. Because if you're like a hip hop producer, you don't necessarily want to go to like a real trap style rapper. Now, if you're a trap style producer, you know, and you're trying to do this with a hip hop producer, a little different. Try to find something that's in your genre that you can work with. Another thing, like somebody said, um, Randy the Boss, that's true. You can go to local open mics and stuff like that. If you have an area that does local open mics and stuff like that, you can find artists and artists can find producers there as well. Um, if you don't have that, go online. And some people have, on Instagram have their live shows. Like me, I have my live producer battles. Uh, I keep saying producer battles. I, I might as well call it producer battle. But I keep having my online producer reviews. Um, and then that way, you can link up with people. And I, I encourage people to link up that way because that way you can find somebody. And then hopefully in the long run, you guys can work and then something will blow. Like I said before, that's how all of my placements came about. Just about 90% of my placements came from me um, dealing with artists who were fairly unknown and then we just worked until they had a song that popped and I just got lucky a few times if you want to just really be honest but at the end of the day it did involve some work and uh, the audience liked it and that's how it happened um, so um, you know people gonna fall out like produced by tip people are gonna fall out with people but you gotta see how solid some people are gonna be with you and if they fall out with you because of somebody else, that's they're not necessarily going to be that solid. Um, let me see here. 
Hey, y'all go ahead and hit these likes up, man. I think I'm giving some pretty good information on here, you guys. I'm giving out some information that really some of y'all should probably be paid for. But I really want to um, help you guys out as, 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 much as, you, as much as I can. Um, okay. Another thing is, another thing is, number two, number two. Another thing is, if you are a producer and you know how to engineer... If you're a producer and you know how to engineer, that will greatly increase your chances of making money, <laughs> okay? And here's why, and I want you to think about this. Artists are always constantly looking for people to record them and constantly looking for people to mix their records, okay? And from my point of view, I was not just making beats, I was engineering everything as well. So when artists came to me, they knew they just wasn't getting a beat. They knew they were getting beat. They were getting a beat and I was going to record them as well. Okay. I was getting them a beat and I was recording them as well. Okay. So it was like a two for one type of a situation. So it wasn't like, okay, he just makes the beat. Now we got to find somebody to pay to do this. No, I might try. I might've charged somebody 500 and they got a beat. And then you got two hours of recording with that. Or, you know, at the earlier stages, it might have been $100. Hey, man, just, you know, I'm new. Just give me $100. Uh, you know, I got some beats for you right now, and I'm going to go ahead and record you. And then that way, you can make some money as well. And I made a ton of money doing it that way. It kept my lights on. It kept my lights on the studio. It kept my lights on at the house. You know what I'm saying? It kept me traveling. It kept me doing everything in between placements. And even to this day, if I work with certain artists, I would still record them. I'm not too big to where I feel like I cannot record somebody or I feel like I'm too old to be recording people because this is what I love to do. And then that, in turn, word got around like, hey, it's this guy that's producing. He's charging a little bit, but at the end of the day, he's producing you and he's mixing your songs. So when I was producing people, I was recording people and mixing the songs and then they would take the song straight to the open mic that night. You know what I'm saying? So. That was one of the things that that is really cool for a lot of you guys. If you know how to engineer, go into these studios. If you want to meet with some of these artists, instead of saying, hey, I got beats, a lot of times you just need to say, hey, I know how to engineer. And these guys are like, you know how to engineer? Cool. But then you might say, hey, I got some beats as well, but I'll still engineer you. And then we get done, I'll play some beats. So either way, you know, I can still be involved with the camp some way or another. Okay? So that's, a, that's another good way. Because there's a lot of engineers who turn turn out being producers. So if most of the times as an engineer, they'll keep you around because they're always gonna need engineers at all times. But they don't always need producers because they get tracks all the time. And if you're an engineer that has a pretty good ear, you might say, hey, I think that beat sounds good for you, bro. Let's go ahead and run that. And then once he gets done, be like, hey, I got some beats for you as well. You can go ahead and check them out or we can go with these other beats. And you might can run through some beats and you never know, you can actually get a major placement that way. But, you know, with these smaller artists, they're always looking for engineers. And that's the way, that's the way where money can come a little bit faster for you guys when you do it that way for all the people who want to make the fast money, not the slower money. Okay? That's how you can do it. Now, um, another thing, another thing that you can do is always look for other young, talented producers and try to manage those producers okay if you may be a little bit older or if you feel like you're not there where you need to be at production wise why don't you find somebody that's cool and actually be their voice you know what i'm saying you be the mouthpiece for them and you do all of the outside work and that way you can collect a percentage on these tracks which is usually about 20 percent um at the end of the day like some people it's including me you know some days we might have our best days producers and some days we don't some days we just have bad days sometimes bad months bad weeks bad years but in the day if you have somebody who's really dope you can actually just manage those producers like i actually manage a producer right now and he has a placement right now that's actually playing on the radio so at the end of the day that would be another great source of making that money Okay, so that's the third way. Number four, number four. This is one that a lot of people talk about. Sync placements, TV placements, stuff like that. Okay, 
This is a, this one's a little bit tricky to me because I never got a sync placement just by myself. I didn't start getting sync placements until I started until I started placing big records. I didn't really get no sync placements like that. Um, yeah, y'all get these likes up, man. Come on, man. Y'all just getting all this free game. Ain't nobody donated. Ain't nobody did nothing. Y'all just around here just ooh, y'all using me today, man. I know it's Monday. Everybody got to save money for the Fourth of July. I get it. I get it. But y'all hit these likes. If you're in here and you think this this information is good, go ahead and hit these likes up for me, man. Because you know I'm, I think I'm giving uh, <laughs> some pretty good advice to you guys right now. So y'all go ahead and hit these likes up for me, man. Hit these likes. Go ahead and press that press that thumbs up button. Come on, y'all go ahead and press it. Go ahead and press. There we go. There we go. Go ahead and press that thumbs up button. There we go. There we go. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, there's a lot of people that would charge you for this information. A lot of people would charge you for this information. Come on, y'all keep hitting that thumbs up. Come on. If you don't like it, go ahead and hit that thumbs down. You know, I really don't care. But go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Go ahead and hit it up. Go on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We almost to 100. Almost to 100. Y'all go ahead and keep hitting that thumbs up. Come on. I ain't going to say nothing until we hit 100. <laughs> I ain't going to say nothing until we get 100. Come on. Thank you. We have one donation a day. Thank you so much. We have somebody that gave to the collection plate. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I still don't know how to say your name. You actually told me how to say it. Thank you, Old Banks. Thank you. What's the Cash App? My Cash App information is actually inside the uh, description right there. It's just dollar sign, Bolo the producer. Thank you so much, Old, old Banks. <laughs> old Banks. <laughs> Thank you so much for that donation. I really appreciate that. All right. So here we go. We got 112 likes. Okay, great. Thank you. So sync licensing. Okay. I never really got a placement doing sync licensing stuff until my stuff got big, like I said before. Um, recycle. Okay, that's how you say it. My bad. Recycle. There we go. I never really got a placement like that until I got a big record and then my song was all in the movies, it was being played at basketball games, football games, stuff like that, and there was a way to get to it. Now, a lot of you guys talk about sync licensing, but a lot of you guys do not know how to do it. And for a long time, I didn't know how to do it as well, but at the end of the day, it's pretty tough to get into it because there's already so many people doing it, and there's already so many other fellow people that are already inside of that business doing it already. You know what I'm saying? So... Right now, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'm trying to submit my stuff for TV shows. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. The only way you're pretty much going to do that is if you either know somebody or you kind of pay yourself a way to get in through one of these little sites or whatever. But you're going to have to know somebody. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to know somebody to get in with trying to get these sync licenses. Or you're going to have to have a song that is basically... Uh, a pretty big record to where they will come to you. I would rather, to be honest with you, with the sync licensing thing, I would rather people come to you rather than you going to them. And that goes with anything. That goes with production. That goes with trying to get deals. That's with everything. I would rather them come to me than to go to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. IHB Productions, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for the donation. Thank you. So that's one thing that I would say, like, with that is um, with the sync licensing thing like a lot of people want to do it they're like oh I'm trying to do the sync licensing thing but if you don't know nobody you can't get in now there's a way you can get in doing that as well um, one of the ways you can get in is actually looking at the credits and finding out who the music supervisor is thank you Lethal Jacket Assassin thank you man thank you thank you so much for that donation thank you so much man appreciate that Man, hey, Barry Williams, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you coming on in. Y'all keep hitting that like button for me. Now, you know, um, you pretty much got to know somebody, and like I was saying before, you have to basically look at the credits. Find out who the music supervisor is of these productions, okay? Sometimes they're easy to get to. A lot of times they're not. What's good, Bricks? What's good? What's good, man? We got Bricks the Main in here, man. Had a great time at your uh had a great time at your uh at your uh producer retreat, man. Great time, man. Y'all need to hit up Bricks, man. Make sure y'all go to this producer retreat. He brought a lot of heavy hitters in there, man. 
dope studio you had it at too. But um, yeah, so you look at so, try to find some of these music supervisors. Try to find somebody who is um, who is uh, like doing this stuff. Or you can try to find some some sync places with smaller indie movies as well. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Small indie movies. Okay, here we go. We got one. Uh, Orande. That's how you say it. Shaw. How to make money as a lo-fi producer, no rapper. Easy one. Just go make an album. As a lo-fi producer, you can make an album or you can make a channel on YouTube that just plays your beats over and over and over again. Okay? My thing is make you a dope lo-fi album and go ahead, go to a place like DistroKid because DistroKid is one of the best places to go ahead and upload your tracks. And if you want to use a link in the description, you can go ahead and click on that link in the description. You will save 7% off. But yes, you can use uh, you could use DistroKid to go and upload your album, and you can use con content ID on there, so you can go ahead and collect content ID off of YouTube and everything else. Because right now, even Instagram is collecting content ID. That's why a lot of you guys that are using videos are getting these takedown and these your video is blocked because they're trying to make sure that there's no copyright infringements and stuff going on. So there's tons of ways to make money like that. Um, thank you, Timothy Wells, for that donation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Bloodline Media. Thank you. Thank you, Bloodline Media, for uh, that donation. Appreciate you guys. But, um, yeah, if you're a lo-fi producer, just go ahead and make the beats and put the beats out, okay? Sitting on a computer is not going to do anything, anything for you as a lo-fi producer. Make your beats, put your beats online, let people hear them. Don't be scared of somebody going to try to steal them and all that stuff. Because right now it is very easy to prove that you're that it's your stuff. Okay, so that's that's uh, uh, one of the things that you can do. Oh, who got their first hundred? ISHB Productions. Hey, got his first hundred off a of distro kid. Man, I wish I'd have my my little thing right here, <laughs> my little foghorn thing right here, man. But congratulations on your first hundred, man. But yeah, if you want to go ahead and do that, it doesn't matter if you're any producer. If you want to go ahead and put your music out, go ahead and you basically be the artist. If you can't find people to rap on it, if you can rap, you rap on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Music has no boundaries. Anybody can do it. And and if you do it enough, you'll actually gain some fans. If you gain one fan, you can gain a thousand. Like for real. All right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Playboy Cardi got Pierre Bourne's beat. Now they're both now, now we both know him. Yeah, that is true. So yeah, that's 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 a few ways you can that's a few ways you could do this. Now, another way to collect money, and I talk about this all the time, is making sure that you have your business stuff straightened out. Okay, make sure you have your business straightened out. Thank you, Five Diamond Music, for sending that to the cash app. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you that. Appreciate you, man. But another way of doing it is handling your business. Like I talked about this over at Bricks Academy when I was talking to some of the guys there. Um, basically, um, you have to know about making sure you're collecting what you need to collect, okay? How to collect your money. Of course, everybody knows about ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, all that good stuff. But make sure you guys Make sure you know about the MLC, okay? And make sure you learn about publishing, how to collect your publishing. Make sure you know about the Harry Fox Agency. Make sure you know about these companies and actually do research on how this stuff actually works. Because even if you do get on a big album, you know what I'm saying? If you do get on a big album and you don't have your paperwork and all that stuff straightened out, you're not going to get paid. Another thing you need to do is if you are going to get on a big album, if you do get a placement on a big album, make sure you get a lawyer to take care of you. Make sure you get a good lawyer, a good entertainment lawyer that works in a city where a lot of entertainment is because that's going to be some of the best lawyers, okay? Try to get you a top attorney, somebody who can really look over the paperwork and make sure that you're getting what you need to get because you don't want to do all of this work. You don't want to do all this grind and you're working, 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 working and grinding, grinding, grinding and building yourself to this point for you to go ahead and lose, like somebody like me, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to lose. Yes, Mechanical License Collective. Yes, 
You got to know about the MLC. I mean, uh, yeah, the MLC and Sound Exchange, Letter Direction, all that stuff. Yes, Jay Cleveland Green, you you are speaking some truth. There you go. BDS, Nelson, too. All that stuff. Yes, that is true. You want to know about all that stuff. And some people, y'all just get up here. Um, Some people, y'all just get up here and you just basically just make beats and then you, you don't worry about nothing and then you like 10 years from now you're like what happened to my money <laughs> you know what i'm saying you don't want to do that okay you don't want to do that yes lethal jacket assassin yes everything you know about the music business by donald s passman i'm telling you right now one of the best books to get you started there's other books as well to get started as well know the business game okay old banks what you got here I'm in school now. Don't see myself doing anything in school. All I do is love making music, doing it every day. I work at a retail store right now, and it's been two years and not my thing. How can I stay motivated? Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. I had basically one job my whole life. Well, I had to. Had to. First job was working at a go-kart track when I was 18 years old. I wasn't doing music then. My second job, I was working at Walmart. And I think I was like 23 when I started working there. I was working at Walmart and I was actually in school at that time. And I was doing music at that time too. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I made more money recording people at my apartment and selling beats than I made working two weeks at Walmart. Like I would make more money in like a day or two doing that than working at Walmart. Me, to be honest with you, I think working for somebody is cool in certain situations if you wanna do music as just like a side thing. If you got an established job and you're making 60, 70,000, $80,000 a year or better right now, you're in pretty good shape. I'm gonna tell you that right now. And a job that has longevity. But at the end of the day, a job can start and a job can end. But what I tell people who do have jobs, who have to bring the money in and stay motivated, the way you stay motivated is just keep making music and keep thinking to yourself that I am going to make this work out. That's the way you stay motivated. It shouldn't take nobody else telling you how to stay motivated because if you really love music, it's going to motivate you either way. It's going to motivate you either way. I was motivated every single day for the past 22 years now. I've been motivated every single day to make music. I cannot stop thinking about making music to the point to where I'm down here every day or I'm at my studio, even if I'm cutting grass, even if I'm playing basketball or whatever I'm doing, football, running, working out, I'm thinking about music all day. And that's the way you have to stay motivated. You have to motivate yourself to become better. And there's nothing wrong with motivating yourself to become better, okay? Even if you're at your job. I know sometimes it sucks being there all day, but sit there when you have idle time, just think about, okay, maybe, maybe I can make this type of beat tonight or maybe I can make this type of song tonight. And when I get home, man, I'm going to make this song. This thing is going to be incredible. And I'm going to release this song one day. Or somebody's going to get on this beat and we're going to release it together. And we're going to do what we got to do and, and try to promote this thing and do what we need to do. You shouldn't have to have anybody else to try to motivate you. The motivation is already out there. Like I'm motivated. Let me tell you, let me tell you some real stuff. Bricks was just on here. I don't know if Bricks is still on here or not. Bricks, are you still on here? But Bricks is he motivated me so much when he pulled up to my studio and there's his brand new Lambo. I think it still had the paper tag on the back of, I can remember. But he pulled up to my studio in a brand new Lambo. And right now, to be honest with you guys, I can get me a Lambo if I really wanted to. You know what I'm saying? I can't get me, I can't, okay, I got you, Michael Long. Hold on one second. I can get one. But I do a lot of real estate and stuff like that too as well. But it motivated me to even go even harder because it was like, man, Briggs really is coming up. He came up here in the Lambo and he's now part of a, the Lamborghini club. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's a part of all these, he's he's doing stuff that a lot of people are not doing. Like my homeboy, Polo the Don, like he has his radio station, Yoko, He's over one of the biggest country artists, you know what I'm saying, in the world. He's doing so much stuff in Nashville and in Atlanta to where he's he's just blew up even more and more and more. 
that motivates me just seeing all this stuff, seeing Polo's house and seeing how he's living and just, you know, he's a year older than me. And it, it's like, it, it just motivates me. Seeing all these young producers make all these dope beats and stuff like that to where it motivates me so much to keep going. Even though I've reached a really big, peak in my life i still want to keep going because that's what motivates me just being out here is what motivates me okay so you should always be motivated by seeing people walking around in their new houses new cars their lives are changed and everything else that should be the motivation for you to keep going um and just make it a side hustle make it a side hustle until it becomes your full-time thing okay that'll be one of the best things you can do all right, Michael Long says, uh, thank you for the help in videos. My question is, how do, you, how do you know when your beats are good enough to sell? You never know. You never know when your beats are good enough to sell. You never know. Just being honest with you. You just got to put them out there and let people tell you. And it might be pretty harsh sometimes. Like, I thought my beats were ready to sell from the first beat until... It was like a freaking 18 year old. Nah, he wasn't. He was like 16 at the time. And man, he came and played some beats. I was like, yo, I got some work to do. And I was 20. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. So, like, you got to just start playing them for people. And then you have to listen to other tracks and listen to those other tracks and see if those tracks sound like, if yours can compete with that. And if you can't tell the difference, then maybe you might be on the right course. But some of y'all can't tell the difference. And some of y'all beats be, oh, my God. But I, I ain't going to say, I ain't, ain't going to say nothing. I'm not no hater. But some beats, y'all be trying to sell, man. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, for real, some of these beats, oh, my goodness. Um, but at the end of the day, like, that, that is one of the best ways of trying to, you know, you know, do it is try to make a sell is go to like a, go to like a, you know, uh, uh, if they're having a beat battle or if they're having something like that, or even come on to my show tomorrow night, 8.30 p.m. We're playing beats tomorrow night, 8.30 p.m. Okay? A lot of y'all guys can't make it on there, but I would love to see everybody come on there. And if you want to play your beats, you can sign up every Friday at 1 p.m. on my website. You can sign up and play your beats, and people are going to give you their honest opinions. But we don't do no hating. We just give you our honest opinions, and we give constructive criticism. And I think that's what a lot of you guys need is constructive criticism. You need constructive criticism, okay? There's nothing wrong with constructive criticism. I still, even right now, my homeboy does not even make beats, but he knows the caliber of beats I can make. And he'll tell me all the time, He'd be like, Bolo, stop making beats on YouTube. <laughs> and I'd be like, why? He'd be like, stop making beats on YouTube, Bolo. I'm like, why? I got to make beats. He's like, your beats never come out sounding good on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, but, you know, I try to show people the sounds. He was like, uh, he was like, just stop it. Can't you like just take your time? I'm like, no, nah, I can't take my time because I like to make my beats in real time on YouTube. Like when I do my cuts and breaks on YouTube, I'm really just cutting. I'm not taking two hours to make a beat on YouTube and I'm squashing everything down into 10 minutes. No, it really takes me like maybe 10 to 12 minutes to make a beat on YouTube, which you guys can check that out on my last video I made because I did it from beginning to end and I did not make one cut on the video. I showed you guys how I make my beats and how fast I make them. Okay, are they the best beats? Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not, but they're my beats, you know, at the end of the day. But if I do have some time to where I can sit down and really just go through a whole beat, it might take me an hour or two, I'll do that. But it just it just fries my brain to, to be sitting over there for, you know, for an hour working on a beat. Nah, I, I can't do that. It just takes too long for me, especially if you got artists around. Um, do I have a Discord? I do have a Discord. But I don't really run it. I don't really be on it like that. It's like it's so many different things. People are like you have a Discord, you have this, you have that. I don't really know how it really works, but I got one set up, and I had somebody trying to help me out with it. But it's just too much stuff. Like if y'all can help me out with the Discord, that'll be great. That'll that'll you know that'll be really good if y'all can help me out with Discord. Somebody, I don't I don't care who it is, y'all. 
try to help me out, moderate the thing or whatever we got to do. Whatever we got to do. Hey, if you're in here, you just got in here, y'all go ahead and hit that like button for me, man. Please hit that like button for me. Please hit that like button. That would be great. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, talking about that, talking about um, other things. Now, yeah, here we go. I almost, I almost lost my point. Side hustles. Side hustles are a great thing to do, especially like we're talking about the kid who was in school or whatever like that. You can make music a side hustle until it becomes something full time. Okay? Side hustles are great for somebody who is necessarily not the most financially free. If you have to work, work. Because a lot of musicians out here are flat broke and they don't want to work because either number one, they're scared for people to see them work or it's like an issue with that situation. That is the dumbest thing to me because you need money to survive. This is how the world is set up. You have to have money to survive. Okay? And CD Beats, you already beat me to the point. <laughs> okay? Appreciate you on that. But um, one of the best things you can do is sell drum kits, sell loops, sell different things like that, sell templates, sell sell mixing things or whatever. That's a side hustle. Even though I know I got my drum kits, which you guys need to go ahead and get it because my drum kits are dope. You know what I'm saying? My drum kits are dope. I know that for a fact. That's a side hustle. That's something that when I go to sleep, I know I, I'm, I didn't have to do anything and make money from it. You know what I'm saying? I, it took me a little bit to get it to where it needs to be at, and then now it's there. Get you some type of a side hustle that will pay you when you don't even do anything. But your side hustle has to be good. Now, don't just do any doggone thing. Like, some of y'all guys come up with some side I'll be like, man, come on, man. No. They'll be like, oh, Bolo, can you, can you help me out with it? No. 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 Mm -mm. No. No. One of my biggest side hustles was mixing. Mixing beats, mixing tracks for people. That was one of my biggest side hustles, was mixing. My other side hustle was really kind of like my main thing was recording. I recorded people. That's Recording is what got me, like I said before. Recording is what something that has got me the most money over time. Okay? Recording is, that's one of the biggest side hustles you can do in music. Recording, mixing, all that good stuff. That stuff is a great way to make money in the music game. And it will keep happening over and over and over again. It's just recording takes a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, um, what, how you say your name? McClish B? He does drone shoots. Photography work. If you video work for these artists. I know a photographer just got a placement. You know what I'm saying? Because he was he, he was like, yo, bro, I want to shoot some videos and, you know, take some pictures of you. Artist was like, cool. How much you charge? Like, man, I just want to work with you to get my name out. Dude was like, all right, cool. I ain't got no problem with that. Let me see your work. You seen his work? He was like, let's run it. They started shooting. Two months later, this kid ended up getting a placement. Then the guy actually started paying him because the kid was like, you know, having to do other gigs. So the, the artist was like, Hey, man, can you come out on Thursday? And the kid was like, well, I can't do it on Thursday because I have a paid gig, but I can come maybe on Friday and we might can shoot. But at the while, since he was shooting for this one guy, he was starting to get so many paid gigs to where the artist was like, yo, hold on, wait a minute, I need you, bro. What is it going to take for you to just be full time with me? He was like, okay, cool. This is how much it's going to be. He was going to charge him $2,500 a month to do that full time. And then he turned around, started playing the guy some beats, and now he ended up on the album. Wasn't like a big, big, big artist, but he's he's pretty big to do that. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, there's so many other side hustles you can do. You know what I'm saying? There's so many side hustles you can do to really help you out in this game. Okay? It's a, it's a ton of side hustles you can do. Okay? And that's what I did. When I was in college, I went to school. I did my, and then a lot of times I didn't work. I just recorded people. I mix people, and if they wanted my beats, they wanted my beats. If they didn't, it's all good. I still was getting people coming in, recording. You know what I'm saying? Even if you have to go to a local studio and say, hey, you know, I, I, how much will you charge me just to engineer some sessions, and uh, if I can bring my own sessions in. It's a lot of times, these studio owners are like, it doesn't matter. Just pay me this much, and as long as you set it up and had a deposit in, you can bring the people in. You can make some money on the side. That's all that matters. 
You know what I'm saying? It's all that matters. Hey, let's go ahead and get them likes up, y'all. Let's get them likes up. We got a lot of people in here today. I like that. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, oh, no more donations, huh? Okay, that's cool. Um, who we go? Do you have any opinion on tight beats? Love making posts and beats, but I don't like using other artists' names and want to be viewed as artists, not to uh, to cop someone's style. Tight beats are actually, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Tight beats, to me, are actually a very good thing. Because I'm going to tell you why. When there's a certain wave of music, just about everything sounds the same anyway. Right? Pretty much, you can tell, like I said this before in another live video down, down the road, you can tell a beat that was made in the 80s. You can tell a beat that was made in the 90s. You can tell a beat that was made in the early 20, 2000s. You can tell a beat that was made in the in the 2010s era, the decade. You can tell beats from that. You can tell. So, tight beats is basically what the wave is right now. Who's the hottest artist? And then sometimes you're basically copying the style in a sense. Right now, everybody uses the same snares, the same 808s, the same hi-hats, the same everything, because that's the way. Are you copying somebody? Of course you are. Because that way you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have the same 808s, the same snares, the same eight, you know, the same melody style, same this, using the same plugins, using the same instruments. Of course you are. It had to start from somebody, and then somebody else heard it, and somebody did their own thing, and you heard it from somebody else, or heard it from somebody else. It's not copying, it's complimenting. That's what I feel. Like it was people trying to copy my beats when I was doing certain things like for Silento, trying to get these little kids and stuff and trying to get them to be on this level. And at the end of the day, that was the wave. I couldn't get mad at it. it, it I didn't. And some people were making better stuff than me that was sounding like me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. <laughs> What's good from Greece? What's good? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Get well, little TJ, man. Get well, little TJ. Definitely. But yeah, it's nothing wrong with tight beats. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you with making tight beats and putting your name out there. Cause there's a lot of I'm a I kid you not. I was in the studio the other day. I was working with Berg and Tom G. And uh thank you. Thank Mike Cummings. Thank you so much for that donation. I was in the studio with them. And I, we didn't have no beats, and I didn't think to, you know, you know, pull up any beats because I knew that, you know, Burger signed to a pretty big label and everything, and and um, and and I know he gets beats all the time, but the first thing he said is, "Hey, look, we can't find no beats." He's like, "Bolo, you got some beats? If we can't find us. Let's go to YouTube and pull some up. Let's go to the tight beats and pull them up." And I was like, "Yo, this is for real." Like he'll literally go to YouTube, pull up a tight beat rap on it and if he's about to put it out he will contact that producer have his label get all the paperwork and stuff straight pay this producer some great money and use that beat and it doesn't matter if the producer has a million plays or if they have a hundred plays if the beat is dope these guys are trying to find it you know what i'm saying these guys are trying to find it you know what i'm saying like i you know some you don't have to be a fan of them like um only defunct. Like I, I get it. You don't. You don't have to. You know. I. It's. It's. It's to each his own, really. But I think that tight beats have really changed the game, and they moved the whole music thing because now, you got to think, like even from Kodak Black to a lot of people got their beats from YouTube, the most searched place in the world. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Troll King. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cash Money AP. Drum Dummy. Internet Money. More of them got rich off of Tight Beach. You are 100% correct, Troll King. You know what I'm saying? Boy, hey, Jay Cleveland. Boy, you own it today. Search Engine Optimization. SEO. You got to know that stuff. It's free. Google will teach you about SEO. You can go look it up right now and Google will have a course about SEO. They, they teach you, Google is one of the few places where they will teach you how to make money online. You can take classes and you will take real classes where you have to pass them. They'll give you a grade and you can pass them and they will teach you how to do e-commerce and business online because the more e-commerce and business online being used by Google is more money ad revenue for them. Okay? 
You know what I'm saying? There's a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on. Ayo Shine, one of the hardest producers, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. You know what I'm saying? And this is another thing for all of you guys. For all of you guys and gals, you know, this is the Bolo congregation. We are all under one roof, and that is the, the roof of music. Okay? Doesn't matter your denomination, doesn't matter your religion. We are all a part of the Bolo congregation, which I do have shirts about to come out. I'm gonna have some shirts and some and some uh and some um and some uh I can't even think right now. Some sweaters and all that stuff, some hoodies and everything coming out too. I still gonna have my thumbs thing, which actually sold pretty good as well, but we part of the Bolo congregation, man. So we're gonna have some shirts and stuff with that. But um Robbie Spies, hey what's good man? What's good? D Davis. Um D Davis in there tomorrow, been struggling, into in all the info I'm getting from you and Bricks. It's been racking my brain, creativity all over the place. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about. So listen, for you guys who are in smaller markets, who are in smaller cities, okay? I'm I'm outside of Atlanta, but I'm I'm basically in the Atlanta area, okay? The Atlanta area stretches 45 minutes out in a full circle. Like it's it's big, okay? But say for instance, you're somebody like even from my hometown, Tampa. Now, Tampa's very big. It's very big, has like 3 million people there throughout the whole area, whatever, but it's not as much going on there as it is here. You know, it's still our thing. Shout out to Tom G for doing the uh, Peace in the Streets uh, uh, water gun fight at the park. That, I heard that went really good. I wish I could have made it, but I couldn't make it. Um, but like, say for instance, you're in a place like maybe... Um, What's a smaller market? Let's say, for instance, like uh, like Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> Let's just say Madison, Wisconsin, okay? You know, Madison is a college town. It's a smaller city. It has an airport there, you know what I'm saying? Or places like, even like Omaha, Nebraska, you know what I'm saying? Smaller town, whatever, but they do get serious there, boy. They, they really do their thing there. Mm, Got to be careful there, Omaha. But say, for instance, you know, those places like that where you feel like, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to get my beats out. What am I going to do? Okay? You guys, I'm telling you right now, with the Internet, you can do anything right now if you just come up with an action plan for it. Okay? If you're a producer, you're learning how to get better production does not mean you have to fly to Atlanta to learn how to be a better producer. You can go right here on the internet. You got people like uh, Bro Beats. Love his channel. And I don't even use FL like that, but I will be using FL a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? I will be using FL a little bit more. More videos on FL will be coming around. But he shows how to make melodies. He shows how to pattern your beats, everything. And you don't even see this guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he's just dope. Bro Beats, Bro Beats TV is one of the dopest places you can go right now to learn how to make melodies and make beats on FL right now because the kid is dope and he just knows what he's doing, okay? Bro Beats TV, uh, if y'all guys know, y'all put the link in here and I'll try to pin it up because he, he does some great stuff. So you can learn you can learn from his site to, um, you know, yeah, he does. G. Brown, he gives it up. You can learn from his site to become a better producer. You know what I'm saying? For FL. Like, he really does a great job, you know, doing his thing. Okay, so you can learn how to do that. Another thing is, if you like a certain rap on the other side, of uh, other side of town or even the other side of country, you can hit them up. You can hit them up via the internet. Everybody's not going to hit you back, but you can hit them up via the internet and say, I want to see some beats. Let's work on an album together, man. Let's get it right. You, 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 if you find a studio, you can record on them. Let's record on them. If I got to mix them, I'll mix them, whatever I got to do. Let's put out an album. Let's do some across the country type of a thing with a different artist. And get with that artist and put that stuff out. Okay? You know what I'm saying? In that way, you can start off, okay, boom, I did it with this artist. Let me try to do it with this artist. Let me do this artist. And if you do it enough times, one of them artists are going to take off. I'm telling you. Somebody's going to take off at some point. And what does that mean? Moolah. Equals money. It equals money. Okay? 
Just being honest with you. That's how I always did it. I just send a whole bunch of music out. I don't send as much music out as I used to because, and like right now, I, I look at it as, uh, like, I just do stuff with the people who I'm connected with. I don't really send that much stuff, stuff out. But if I was in a lot of you guys' shoes right now, I would send beats out to everybody I could. I would take 20 beats and send the same 20 beats out to as many people and made a best man win. I wouldn't even trip. People are like, oh, they might steal my beats. Yeah, 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 yeah. But unless, <laughs> there's so many ways you can get a lot of that stuff taken down. Okay? For real. Like, leave the jacket assassin. Man, you better send them beats to anybody you can that's real hip hop guys. I'll send, I'll send them beats out to everybody because your beats are hard. You know what I'm saying? Your beats are hard. Beats are real hard. Oh, man. Yes. Okay, quick draw gaming. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Twisted doing his thing, man. And Twi that's what Twisted did, man. Twisted, shh, Meridian, Mississippi. And you know what I'm saying? Came up with my homeboy Grady, was was at my homeboy Grady's house, just making beats all day and giving, basically just giving out beats to everybody. Next you know, he started doing stuff with Rollo. He started doing a lot of stuff with QC. And next you know, boom, little baby. <laughs> The biggest album of 2020 during the pandemic goes double platinum. The album. He had like three singles on that. It's crazy. Come on, man. Your life will change. And like I tell people, too, it doesn't matter what you use. It doesn't matter if you use the MP, GarageBand, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know what I'm saying, Logic, Fruity, uh, you know, Studio One, Reason. It doesn't matter. Just learn what you can learn. You know what I'm saying? Learn what you can learn. <laughs> You're one of the best guys, like a celebrity. Thanks, <laughs> Dave. I, I was like, I, I was like, yo. You know what I'm saying? Should you register your work with BMI before you send it out? <sighs> nah, you ain't gotta do all that. Unless the song is done with it, but you ain't got to do all that. Unless you want to just, like, this This is what I say if you guys really want to be protected. Okay, this is one way you can do this stuff now, and I'm going to try to give y'all a little secret before we get out. We got, hey, man, can we get one more donation of, like, $2.05, something, $3.05? I got to be like, past, I got to be like the old church pastors. We need the donation of $3.05. Does anybody have three dollars and five cents? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, thank you. Cole Heat sent five to my cash app. Thank you. Thank you so much. We got it. We got it, y'all. Don't worry about it. We're good. <laughs> We're good. We are good. But hey, who's gonna come up tomorrow night? Uh who's gonna come up tomorrow night uh for the beat for the beat review? 8 30 tomorrow night, Eastern time zone. Who's gonna be there? I want to see all the people in there because when I talk about money, y'all come on in here real quick. But for the beat reviews, some it'll be it gets like 150, 160, then it'll kind of fall off. But we got 231 in here because everybody wanna learn how to make money. Who's coming in for the beat review tomorrow night? I want to see all y'all on there tomorrow. And I want y'all to go ahead and tip these, you know, saying these guys. Oh, thank you. Hassan, thank you so much. Producer by King Bell. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys so much for the donation. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Music beats, I have a dollar fifty-eight. <laughs> but who's gonna come on tomorrow? Now, I want to see all you guys on, and I want you to support these other producers, man. There's a lot of dope producers that come on to my show, man, for real. And hey, if y'all need to get y'all beats mixed, man, I'm gonna tell you right now, Ducky DeVito has some of the best mixes. Ayo Shine has some very good mixes as well. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing about me. If I see people that's that's doing their thing, I gotta shout you out. Like Ducky has some dope beats. Ayo Shy has best beats. Big beats. Franklin uh, Franklin has best beats. Fat Boy has great beats. But so far as like mixing, I don't know. Ayo Ayo and Ducky boy, y'all got some good mixing going on, man. I, I, and Ducky, I still gotta send one of them tracks over so you can go ahead and do your thing to it. You know what I'm saying? How can you submit to my thing every Friday 1 p.m. I have sign up. Uh, I had gotten to a little issue last Friday, but we got that resolved. Um, it's every Friday at 1 p.m. between 1 and 2 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? But I do I do my sign-ups. Thank you. 
Thank you, man. Yeah, if you in Houston, get up with everybody. Thank you, Michael Long. Man, thank you. Thank you so much, man. Y'all come on through and support these producers, man. These guys spend their hard-earned money to come on here, and they got some heat, okay? Some of these guys got some real heat. And if you're an artist, if you're a producer slash artist, or if you're an artist on here, you want to get some beats, get up with these guys. I'm telling you right now, this is dope. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you, uh, David uh, Stadium Heights. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, 1 p.m. Eastern sign up. Thank you. Thank you. Only the funk. Thank you. 1 p.m. Eastern sign up every Friday. Uh, if you go into the site, a lot of people get confused. Thank you, Mr. LD. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you go into the site, I set a date, okay? And it'll only be the only date that you can pick on the actual site for that. If you try to do it after, before the link is active or after the link is done, after it's already filled up, it's going to tell you that there is none available for six months because I only make it available for one week at a time, okay? Um, man, bro, for watching one of your videos about logic, I learned how to brush that hi-hat piano roll. Yeah, that's, I'm telling you, I'll be trying, I'll be trying to drop a few jewels in there. Um... Do you still use Logic when you use a machine? No, I use I use everything separate. I use Logic by itself. I use machine separate. I do everything separate. Um, can you post the link to those guys who do the mixing? I think Ducky is in here. Ayo Sean is actually on here right now. If you look in the comments, you'll see Ayo Sean right now. Ayo Sean, can you give them your uh your IG address? Um and Ducky, if you're on here, give them that. But both of them will be on the beat review tomorrow. They and they're actually very active in the comment section as well. You know what I'm saying? So that's how you can get up with them. So it's Ayo Sean. He just if you scroll through the comments, he's right here on there. And then Ducky is actually he was on here. I don't know if he's on here right now, but you know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and look them up. What's good from Russia? What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? But um they do a great job with mixing every week and you know what I'm saying they're dope and I think Ducky is using Logic and A.O. Sean is using the machine it's crazy and, he, and I gotta get up with both of them because I gotta learn something from both of them they're, they're really dope man thank you guys man all you guys that are donating man thank you guys so much man thank you guys so much so yeah I hope this whole thing was informative for you guys i hope you guys learned a lot from what i was saying today i will take this live and i will break it up to just some key points maybe make the live maybe no more than like 10 minutes or whatever like that so you guys can see some of the key points this friday uh the video will probably come out around 1 1 15 1 30 and uh we'll do the signups at one o'clock so what i'll do is um I will put this video out. It'll be before one o'clock, but I'll make sure I'll be on time for the signups this week. So if you do want to sign up for the next beat review, which will be next Tuesday or Wednesday, um, the sign up will be this Friday at 1 p.m. on my website. If you go to my community tab, if you go to my main page, go to my community tab, I leave updates. You know, I might leave some pictures. I'll let you know what's kind of going on with me on a day-to-day -day basis on my stories. I will leave all the information on there i'll let you know when it's going to be available it's going to be available this day what time all that stuff like that and then i will let you guys know when the link will be available so i hope this worked out for you guys if not you can watch this live rewind i'm gonna make sure that you can watch this live rewind and i'm gonna make sure that i cut this video up and we're going to do a uh, a recap and it will be posted on friday now another thing is before i leave out there's a producer named Boogie Beats that I'm going to be doing on my producer spotlight this weekend. And this is a crazy situation. We did the producer spotlight video two weeks ago. Okay, we did it actually more than two weeks. It was on it was two weeks ago from Tuesday. So a little over two weeks ago. He made a beat on a producer spotlight. He made the beat that Tuesday. They sent the beat off to Erica Banks that night. She recorded that song that night sent the session back they mixed the session got the session mastered and it made her album by that thursday and it was placed on her album by that friday kid you not and that was one of his first two major placements 
So he will be on the producer spotlight and he's actually making that beat on the producer spotlight this Thursday. So this Thursday at 12.30 p.m., we got Boogie Beats on there. He's one of K Major. K Major is a producer and an artist. He's produced for a lot of people, for Jacquees, for Future. A lot of people wrote a lot of songs for people. K Major was one of my understudies when he was a kid. One of the dopest uh, kids I've ever, ever been associated with. Now he's a little older, but you know, I've been dealing with K Major for years. Super talented kid. And he, um, and he brought his producer over and everything worked out, okay? So I wanna let you guys know that, just go ahead and check that out. Go ahead and show some support. And man, I wanna see y'all guys tomorrow night. I wanna see you guys tomorrow night. Thank you, Ayo Sean. I wanna see you guys tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern so you guys can support these producers, man. And we're gonna have a great time tomorrow, okay? So hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned something from this live. Check out the live recap at the end of the week or watch the whole live when I get done with this. And, you know, like I always say, peace out. Love you guys. And shout out to the Bolo congregation, man. Pastor Bolo is out. Oh, Bishop Bolo is out. See y'all later.